You done done something that so many people never do. I ain't got one. You graduating from college. I ain't do that. I ain't graduate from college. I got no formal education. But look at me though. I'm finna teach you something now. I'm finna show you something. See, now a large part of this speech is gonna be done using improper grammar. Cause I don't have that either. I ain't never really talked that good. Ain't, ain't really my thing. If you in here and you well spoken, I commend you. And you're going to need that. In a lot of places you're going. You can't be a doctor and talk like this here. You, you, you can, you're not going to. Nah, you not. You can't be a professor, a teacher. You can't be in the society that a lot of y'all trying to get in. And see, they've been trying to change me for a long time. When I first got on TV, me and Sandy the Entertainer was on the Steve Harvey show. And they hired, I don't even know what they call it, this lady, uh, white lady, uh, came in. And uh, she was uh, a ling, uh, ling, linguistic, linguist, and she was a ling, ling, linguist, linguist coach, whatever. And when she came in the room, I was confused. Me and Sam was sitting there because she didn't have no pots with her or nothing. Because I thought that that was pasta. So when she came in there with the ling linguist or linguistics, whatever, I thought it was a cooking class for pasta. So me and Sam sitting there looking just as crazy. And the lady started telling me that they decided that you need to speak more properly. You need to learn how to enunciate your word. I stopped her. I said, do you mean pronunciate? That lady looked so confused. This is a true story. And she said, no, Mr. Harvey, if you hope to one day be in millions of homes across America, you're going to have to be more verbally communicative and more understood. I said, that ain't, that ain't how I do it. She looked so confused. She said, you're going to have to change the way you sound. I said, let me ask you something. Which one of these sound better than you? I am broke or I'm is rich? That lady's shaking her head. It's all right. When you leave here, young people, my message is really for everybody in this building. I want to challenge you to something today. See, I don't know what the theme of your graduation is. You know, you, you go to these places and they have fire and spirit. They have a theme of excellence is worth excelling. I don't, I don't know what your theme is. I didn't ask nobody. You know, they, they might have emailed it to me, but I got 2,500 unread emails in my email box right now. But I want to challenge you something. What you've done up until now has been an amazing accomplishment. I take my hat off to you. What you've accomplished should be played short. And you have so far to this point become successful. But I'm challenging everybody in this graduating class. See, being successful is what everybody wants. Everybody I know want to be two things. They want to be happy and they want to be successful. But I'm going to challenge you today. I want you to go a little bit past success. I want somebody in here to go up out of here and be great. There is a difference, you know. There is a difference between success and greatness. Success, you get your degree, that's successful. You get a job, that's successful. You raise a family, that's successful. So far, the success you have has been for yourself. You're successful. Congratulations. But you didn't get this piece of success by yourself. You see these people wrapped around this building? You think you proud. Lord have mercy. There's some people up there got their chest stuck out so far. You have to understand the sacrifice that these people in here them put so you can be right there. So you can be successful. Some of y'all first time graduates in your family. First time ever going to college in your family. Some of y'all trying to continue a legacy of people around here that have been to college and want their kids to graduate too. Whatever the case though, people up in here, man, sacrifice for you to get here so you could be successful. You went to college to become successful. But I'm going to ask you something. I need 30 of y'all to go out of here and be great. I need just 30 to go be great. You know, there's a difference, you know. Success is for yourself. You know, they told me one they said, man, you know, a basketball player get a big contract. He's successful. Great. No, no, no. He ain't great. He's successful. You make $100,000 a year. You ain't great. You successful. I want you to be great. I want you to go out of here and be great. You know the difference between great and success? Great people change other people's lives. Great people put other people in front of them. Great people go back to their communities and change lives. Great people buy a big house up on the hill and then teach other people how to get up on the hill too. That's what great people do. Gandhi was great. Mohammed Ali was great. Martin Luther King was great. 
They was great. They made other people great. Muhammad Ali said, I said I was the greatest before I was the greatest. You got to claim greatness, man, or you can just be successful. Go on, get your job. Go on and make your money. But man, you change somebody's life, you can be great. We need somebody from ASU to go up out of here and become great. Be a life changer. Change some boys' lives, some girls' lives. Show somebody how you got a college degree. That's the beginning of greatness. Just keep a journal, right? If I was here, I had my journal, I'd be taking notes, right? These two days in my journal. Now, if you're caught without your journal, you just take the notes. When you get back home, you put those notes in your journal, throw the paper away. Because we don't usually go through paper to review. But see, my journals now make up a significant part of my own library. My journals all reserved privately for my children and my grandchildren. Can you imagine what I've collected over the years? It's unbelievable. There are three treasures to leave behind. Here they are, number one, your pictures. Don't leave the event unrecorded. It takes only a fraction of a second to say, here's who I was with. When I travel the world, we take all these pictures. And here's one of the gifts. People send me the pictures they took of me and them. It's part of the treasures I have on the farm. Incredible. A picture's worth a thousand words to describe the scene, the emotion, what happened. Say, wow, this was an extraordinary day for me when I met these people. Here's what they told me happened to them when they went to my seminar 10 years ago. Wow, the drama comes back if you've taken the pictures. It's one of the treasures to leave behind when you go. Remember the old photographs that we have now, of, you know, 100 years ago? 70, 80 years ago, just a few photographs. What would it be like if you had thousands of photographs of the past, of your history, your mother, your father, right? grandparents? So change all of that now for your children. Leave all your photographs as a record. Here's what's next to leave behind, and that's your library. The books that changed your life, the books that changed your health, the books that rescued you from oblivion. The books that you passed on to other people, they were so exciting for you. The books that made you financially independent. The books that developed your leadership. The books that gave you wisdom to ponder when things were tough. The books that got you through the winter. The books that helped you to plant in the spring and harvest in the fall. Don't let too much time pass without staying in touch. If we probably took a survey right now, here are the 20 most important people in my life. How long has it been since I sat down with this one or called this one or wrote a letter to this one we'd probably say wow the man is right just that little comment making a list of 20 and saying how long has it been i can see where some of them has been too long you know they're considered very close friends we just have to pay more attention and i just now thought about that make a list of 20 and say how long has it been we try to think of it we make a phone call i say wow it's been too long gotta have lunch we gotta get together and some that may live in your own community where it's a little easier to stay in touch but, you know, some of our friends are not close by. Staying in touch is just a vitally important part of developing a good relationship. Take care of those things that matter. What doesn't matter to you, say if nobody calls me on my birthday, that doesn't matter. But for someone else, it does matter. So you just make sure that gets done those kind of things it's easy especially in a busy society and like myself you know getting on an airplane flying off to some other country and be so busy doing that and the preparation for doing it and then recovering when you get home it's easy to let things slide but we always later have some regrets that we didn't stay in touch more often especially somebody older that passes right we say wow i should have made more phone calls and stayed in touch but whatever it takes to keep a good relationship going it's like tending a garden you can't let it go too long without tending the things that matter, making sure it flourishes, something well nourished, which is true of all of our values. We must protect them like a father, nourish them like a mother to make sure they give us full value. And then be of full value to someone, not that you have to be around all the time, but to be available. There's an ancient phrase, here's what it says, if you try to save your life, you will lose it. But if you will lose your life, meaning if you will invest your life, that's the best way to save it and to multiply it many times over. So here's the phrase, investing life into life has the potential of creating miracles. Investing life into life. Investing life into life creates a new baby. But investing life into life with ideas, information, association, influence can create enterprise, can create a corporation, can create a business, can create a movement, can create something that benefits many more people than just those few that might have invested in each other's lives. So that should be one of your goals, is to be valuable enough to invest in somebody else's life, starting first if you're married with your children, and then invest in each other. Marriage and friendship, 
These associations are a chance to invest in each other, a business enterprise.